What's he boy? It's a bit cold out there. Hi there guys, Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and welcome to another video on the channel. If you followed our travelling series and uh, you watched our, our documentaries of us travelling northern Europe you'll know that we're here in northern Sweden now, the, the, the lower northerly part of Sweden and we're actually living here now and working here and uh, you would have seen Mons as well, our, our dog or Lumpus as I like to call him because he's a big lump. He's a lovely dog and uh, we adopted him when we came here. He kind of came with the house really. We're renting a house and the, the lady moved to the city. Uh, she couldn't take the dog with her because it was high rise buildings and lots of other dogs around. He was barking a lot and he wasn't very happy. So he stayed here with us and uh, we're just out today uh, doing a tag video. This tag was originally started by Hayes from Hayes Outdoors. Hope you're well mate. And uh, I think it's for a good course, it's, it's for men's mental health and I was tagged by David from uh, Taralga Bushland Escape so thanks very much for the tag David obviously I'll be tagging two people at the end of this video as well and the tag is to raise awareness for men's mental health and it's called Show Us Your Stake so I'm just out here today, um, Meggie's with uh, Lumpus or Monts over by the fire the fire's got to die down quite a lot for us to do some cooking uh, got some birch on there and it's blazing hot, really needs to die down to embers and then we can get cracking and I'll show you what I'm cooking up today. So men's mental health, it's, uh, it's a real serious thing and, uh, and I think uh, I'm not an expert on mental health. I've certainly been depressed in my life, I certainly have issues, I suffer from anxiety um, and I guess anxiety is a form of mental health so I can kind of communicate to you a bit about that. Um, I've never really been so depressed that uh, I felt suicidal or anything like that. I've never experienced that kind of thing. Um, and I guess that one thing I do to combat my, my anxiety and everything is that I communicate a lot to, me to Megan and to my friends. 
you know the people who are out there who, who know me well you'll know that I, I don't hide the way I feel I have no shame in that um, I'm not one of these tough guys who keeps it all in and, and puts on a brave face and, and sort of mugs off emotion if someone talks to me and confides in me I'll always listen to them I'll always try and help you if you want help um, I'm always there to listen to my friends and you know and I don't, I don't mind that at all and I'm grateful that they feel like they can talk to me uh, and you know I, I talk to Megan and my family and I'm just open and I'm just honest with myself and uh, even though you know I, I, I'm, I'm not ashamed to hide that I'm un unhappy to people or that I am happy you know just just I just am who I am I just be how I feel I almost definitely analyze the way I feel sometimes and I try to find that the causes of why I might behave a certain way so if I get anxiety for example these days I take a step back and I, I have a look before I feel that feeling coming on of, an of anxiety and I think why are you behaving that way what's triggered it this time and then you you kind of map it out in your mind and, and then you begin to be able to cure yourself because you start to understand the way you behave and what triggers it and how you feel so it may seem that out here in this environment you know we you see videos of people like me who go outdoors to varying levels of skill and and kind of severity of of the environment and you think wow they're real manly men and they know what they're doing and they're tough and they're with it but the reality is is that's not the case um at all uh, i mean i have no shame in saying that you know i i uh i'm an emotional guy and uh <laughs> and different things affect me in the world and sometimes i'm not as strong as i could be and and that's just the way life is but the main thing is is i'm honest with myself and uh I don't believe in fate, I don't believe in karma, I don't believe in luck and uh, I don't find things to believe in to explain situations. I'm somebody who believes in me, I believe in myself and uh, I know I can make the things happen that I want to happen and, and that's where it begins. Uh, like this going travelling, you may look at me and say, wow Mike, you're really lucky, you know, you're out here in this beautiful place um, you travelled with with your wife and you had a great time but the reality is is that wasn't luck we worked really really hard to make it happen we talked about it we both wanted the same thing ultimately and, and so we've done it and uh, you know I try my hand at everything in life I, I guess I spent a long time building the Jeep and I wasn't working much at the time I was earning a little bit of money through my handcrafts and Megan was doing the main bulk of the work while I got everything ready for the trip and, uh, and then she ended a, a sort of employment. We had about £500 when we left the UK. We did our handcrafts on the road as we travelled and uh, it kind of helped us get through the trip and we've never really had a lot in life but we've never really needed a lot. And then we arrived here in Sweden with nothing. We knew very few people. We had no money. We managed to find somewhere to live and rent. We adopted a dog and uh and we're living our life and megan's put her feelers out and got a job i'm still doing my handcrafts and working and uh i've got a workshop here set up now and that's life and we're, we're doing it so all of that is doable anyone can do that it's not a difficult thing to do and uh it comes with a lot of challenges i'll tell you that there's a lot of stressful moments a lot of anxiety involved in that there's a lot of struggle and the way to deal with that is to just keep believing in yourself. Keep moving forward every day, a step at a time. Don't expect too much from yourself. That's a big thing that people do in life. It's one thing I do, expect way too much from yourself. And, uh, and that way you just overload your brain and then you frazzle, burn out and flip out. You don't want to do that. You just want to slow down, write things down that you need to do and just tick it off every day and just move forward whatever it is you need to do that that kind of that can really help you basically so as i say i've never really suffered from a, a real depression and been suicidal or anything i've never had anything like that but i've certainly been unhappy in life and uh, and only you can change that only you can change that and uh and and try not to um think that the world is out to get you 
That's one big problem I think that human beings all share, is they think the world is out to get them. They, uh, they think, oh, karma made me drop my coffee, karma made me crash my car, the world's out to get me, that guy doesn't like me, um, somebody said this to me, I, I don't know, it, it, this can be anything, can't it? The ice could crumple now and I'll fall through and plunge into the ice and I'll be a frozen icicle when I climb out and I'll have to get in the car and drive home. It's not fate, that's just circumstance, that's just stuff happening. Um, that's just things happening and, uh, and really you need to get out of that mindset if you want to be happy. You need to just accept that things happen in the world and that uh, and, and it really all just starts with you and you just believe in yourself and be strong and get through it and communicate to people. Never bottle stuff up. If you bottle things up, they will come back to get you later in life. They will manifest themselves over time like a parasite and they will corrupt you and they will just ruin you as a person. Be open about yourself, communicate. There's no shame in it. There's no tough guy act. There's no tough woman act. There's just, it's just be open about how you feel and be honest with yourself. Yeah, it's not as simple as that, but anyway, that's, that's my two cents on everything and I, I hope it's helped. <clears throat> I really do. So, uh, Megan's over there with Lumpus. Um, the fire's probably died down and I'm going to show you what I'm cooking and uh, I hope you enjoyed the vid. I'll be back in a bit to announce who I'm tagging. Got uh, some lingon berries, traditional Swedish. We've got some capercaillie just here. There's the fillet, it's one of the breasts. And that's from a female, um, so nice and tender. We've got some mushrooms and that's kind of the way I'm going to roll. I would have bought some bread normally I would have had it in bread, like a big sandwich. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, we'll get some butter in this pan. And then uh, get a nice blob of butter there. Get the cast iron heated up and then we'll chuck in the capicani. And you cook it a little bit like steak. It can be rare in the middle. Medium rare is normally what you do capicani like. But uh, for me, I actually like meat a little bit more well done for my sins and I know some of you out there are getting upset about that but that's the way I was brought up. Cool. Nice long handle on these as well. Oh look at that. So you don't get any burniness going on. I'd say that's a bit heavy for lugging in the backpack but I'm going to make a leather cover for mine. A bit like the tinder pouch but slightly different and it'll just go on the side of the pack and then when it's all roasted on the fire it's not going to get all the black stuff over the backpack because um, this is its first outing. When you're cooking on the fire like this you really don't want to just smother the embers by putting it on that little log there and getting it a bit of elevation. You want, you want a little bit of an air gap like that and then it keeps it nice and hot. Especially if you've got a thin bed of embers, it's easy to smother them out. Oh, butter, Daddy. I love butter in my veins. That's looking real good now. Get that pan nice and hot. This is where they sing opera. It's called Vitahuset. And uh, got a massive boulder above us that carelessly just sits there. Been there for a long time. And obviously due to some sort of glacier. And uh, it's got a weird acoustic thing going on, so when you sing, like, The pylons of time, incredible, standing tall. I promised I'd never do that again. Sorry. Right, let's get this sucker on. This poor old nut. I absolutely love mushrooms there. I think it's my most in the thing I'm most interested in when it comes to the outdoors. I spent lots of time in the UK, almost 
a lot of my close friends, we, we would spend the mushroom season when it was most active going out into the Forest of Dean and picking mushrooms. Always looking for Belita sedulus. And I found, in fact, I went back from Sweden when we traveled back not long ago for some weddings. And I, we found, we went to this one woodland and found uh, Lactarius deliciosus, the saffron milk cat. Hundreds, and, well, thousands of them, hundreds of thousands of them covering this woodland. And they're quite, quite rare in the south of England, so um, yeah, it was really good actually. They're probably one of my favourites. They've been out mushrooming here in Sweden. Found lots of uh, Belita sedulus, lots of it here, uh, which is great because it is one of the top, one of the top. Yeah, this looks done. Looking good. Got a bit of glug as well. It's like a Christmas drink. I think this is alcohol free, this one. You just warm it up over the fire and it's like mulled wine. So that's pretty good. And lingon berries, so let's uh, turn that over. Have a little look. Oh. That is kind of how I like it. Probably not to everyone's luck taking. I'd say that is well done for some people. But this is capicale, a little bit different to a beef. Very gamey flavour. That is really good. Oh man. Wow. You've got to try this. Leave some for me. Mm, amazing. <laughs> Come and try it. You like it? Mm. That's really nice. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Let's tuck in. You're a very lucky boy. Well, that was a very nice lunch. Nice bit of capicale there. It was delicious. Yeah, Maggie really brought that back. It. You loved it, didn't yeah. you? It's probably the nicest capicale I've had, actually. We did season it at home with salt and pepper before we brought it out. And um, Maggie brought this back from work, so one of the hunters gave it to her just to take home and start practicing with some game and stuff, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, so it's benefits to the job, perks or whatever you call it. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. And I hope what I said earlier helped. I don't know whether it did or not, whether it's just me rambling on as per usual. But I just want to thank David from uh, Taralga Bushcraft Escape. He was the chap who originally tagged me. Uh, so cheers, David, for the tag. Really appreciate it. You probably tagged me just at the right time as we were just starting to get normality back in our lives and be able to come out and do this kind of thing. Um, if you'd tagged me maybe three weeks ago, I was, it was just work non-stop. But, um, you know, it's the way it has to be sometimes. So I've got two people I like to tag. I think that's the way it goes. I've spoken to one of the guys, um, a friend of mine back in the UK. I'm sure a lot of you know him, uh, Zed from Zed Outdoors. So Zed, um, love to tag you for the Show Us Your Steak Challenge. I know you're a vegetarian. I'm not sure whether you eat fish, uh, but I don't think it has to be just about steak. Um, I didn't do steak. I did a breast of a bird, so... You know, I think it's just getting out there, spreading the message, and I'm sure you can do the rest, and you know, you'll do a great job. So, hope you're well, mate, and um, yeah, look forward to seeing your video. And also, a chap that uh, I've been speaking to on Instagram. I think he lives in the south of Sweden. I really enjoy following his adventures on Instagram, and just actually learnt that he had a YouTube channel, which I felt a bit guilty about, um, and that's Ted Weirham. So Ted, I'm not sure whether you're watching this. I'm guessing your name is Ted. Uh, if it's not, I'm really sorry again. <laughs> um, but I really love your videos. I've been watching them and uh, you do some fantastic videography. 
striker and a yeah, obviously a range of different things and obviously a very seasoned outdoorsman. And um, yeah, maybe you could do a Shirsey Steak Challenge. And I'll put links to David's channel, Taralga Bushcraft Escape, Zed, and obviously Ted Weirham as well, uh, all in the description below. So check those channels out if you haven't already. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the videos. But we're going to enjoy our glog, or glug. Glug. Glug, as it's glug, called. Glug, glug, glug. Maybe that's where it came from. No. No, I don't know. Somebody, there'll be Swedish people in the audience, I'm sure, that will be telling us. But we're slowly learning Swedish. Uh, we can kind of introduce ourselves and go into shops and ask what, whether they sell certain things and how much things are and how are people and we're well. And you can sort of go in and say various stuff, can't you? And it's a very tough language to learn, though. Look at him at, up the top there. He's like, I've had enough now. Moles, going home. come head. Bye, guys. Honestly, he's like... He's a lovely dog, but he's almost too intelligent for his own good. He's so so switched on, isn't he? Yeah. But what's going hey, on, mate. aren't you, mate? You are right, boy? You are boy, boy? He's slapping his crown jewels against my knee. <laughs> Don't pretend you don't love it. I don't love it. <laughs> well, look, from the three of us, like goodbye and hope you like the video. And uh, you'll see, we'll, see, we'll see you very soon. I know I always say that and then it's like a month and you wonder where I am. There was supposed to be episode 10 of our Travelling Northern Europe series, but this kind of had to come before. So I might still do a little bit of that. I might just crack on with going out and sort of show you a few clips in the next video of what's going on in life. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, we're going out and doing some camping soon, aren't we? We are, yeah. Going off in the Jeep up into the, some of the mountains here and the nature reserves and some amazing wilderness that in this country. It's just so beautiful. And um, listen, just like that everywhere. Yeah. No aeroplanes droning Slowly. overhead or roads or motorways in the background. It's just truly beautiful wilderness. So uh, yeah, thank you again, guys. and. Um, We'll catch you very soon. Take care. Bye. Say bye, Lumpus. Say bye. Are you sniffing the camera? It's all gone, mate. Go and eat your dry, chewed up... Go and eat your dry <laughs> Captain Wheato balls or whatever. <laughs> Moss. That's right. Come with me. Into the larder.